So you may have noticed that I don't use a graphical calculator. Uh, in all of my teaching videos uh, that I've done for the current spec, I am using the Casio ClassWiz, the uh, FX991EX. Okay, now there are uh, a couple of different class wizards that you can buy, but it's the 991EX that I use. Otherwise, uh, there are other versions that have less functions. And I thought I'd put together a video of six things that students forget you can do with this calculator that could help you in the exam. So the first function I'm going to look at is the solve function. This is the most powerful tool that the calculator has that often gets uh, underutilized. Okay, so let's say you want to solve 8e to the 2x minus 3 is equal to 15. Okay, now you wouldn't want to do what I'm just about to do on the calculator as your only answer. You'd have to show this algebraically if you were in an exam. But let's say you've shown it algebraically, you've got the answer, and now you want to check whether it is actually the correct answer or not. Okay, so this is where the solve function really comes into its own. So, what we're going to do is we're going to type in this equation using the X button, which is in the top right-hand corner of the calculator, and for the equals, we're going to have to use the red equal sign. So, I'm going to type in 8e to the 2x take away 3, and then the red equals, and then 15. Okay, now once you get there, you don't want to press the equal sign, otherwise you'll get an error message. Okay, you want to press shift, then solve. And I'm going to use, well, what it comes up with, this is what always confuses uh, students, is that it comes up with this black bar at the bottom saying x equals something. Okay, now that is not the answer to this question. Um, what it's actually asking you is, where would you like me to start looking? OK, so it's using a numerical method to home in on the solution. So I'm going to try x is equal to 2. Press equals and then press equals again. And your calculator might have to think about it for a bit, but it will come up with x equals 1.81430433. OK. Now, your calculator also tells you the L minus R equals bit at the bottom and says, in my case, zero. Now, that's to do with how accurate your answer actually is, whether it's exact or not. So, sometimes you'll find the L minus R equals some number that is horrifically large, in which case I wouldn't trust your solution and then try another starting value. Now, if we tried sine x equals 0.3 instead, now this has an infinite number of solutions. Okay, so how does your calculator handle that? So let's see. So if we type in sine of x uh, is equal to 0.3, so using the red equals here, and then press shift solve. Uh, let's start, uh, my calculator is in degrees, just to kind of let you know. Um, let's start with x equals 20 and see what happens. So I get x equals 17.45760312. OK, so that's when I've got this starting value of 20. OK, so let's instead, I'll press equals again, and now I can change my starting value. OK, so let's try uh, 100. Let's see what happens then. Now, when I try 100, I get exactly the same answer, OK? So even from x equals 100 degrees, it is homing in on this solution, OK? Now, if I try uh, again, let's say 120. Ah, now x equals 120, I'm actually homing in on a different solution. 162.5423969. So let's say you had to solve sine x equals 0 0.3 in an exam. Okay, you can check to see whether your two answers between 0 and 360 match up uh, with this. Now your calculator also has a convert button. You may or may not have seen this. Now this is above the number 8. OK, so let's say uh, we wanted to convert 50 kilometers per hour into meters per second. OK, now 
Let's say um, you forgot how to do this in the exam or you didn't trust what you had written down was correct. Okay, so in order to do this, you would multiply through by 1,000, then divide through by 60, divide through by 60 again. Okay, or you can go to your calculator. So if I go to shift, then number 8, you'll see there's a whole list of different way things that you can convert. Okay, so the most useful I found uh, is if you scroll down and you'll see that number 1, you get velocity uh, above pressure. So if I click velocity, you'll see that there are now two options, kilometers per hour to meters per second and meters per second to kilometers per hour. So I'm going to go with number one, kilometers per hour to meters per second. And what you've got to do is you've got to scroll to the left. OK, so press left on your calculator and then type 50, press equals, and it'll come out with 125 over 9 meters per second. And so that's your uh, velocity converted. Now for number three in this list, I don't actually use it uh, a great deal myself and that's mainly because I'm very confident that I'm going to be doing this right. Let's say that uh, I want to find the equation of the line going through these two coordinates. Now for a lot of people that's very very easy. I don't need the calculator to check. However uh, if you're a little unsure okay then this may be the trick that you need. So and this is really a trick so what we're going to do is we're going to go to menu and then we're going to go to number six for statistics strangely okay and what you'll find in statistics is option number two y equals a plus b x now effectively what you should get is a table for x's and y's and really what i'm going to do is i'm going to work out the regression equation the least squares regression line for two points which will precisely be the equation of the line going through those two points. So I'm going to type in the 1 and then the 8. And then I'm going to type in the minus 3 and the 2. OK. Now, once you've got there, you want to press Option and then number 4 for regression calculation. And you will find you've got the A and the B value. So you've got Y equals A plus b x. Now the only problem that you may have to deal with is that sometimes well, these numbers won't be in exact form. Okay, And so um, maybe you'll only use it as a checking tool if the gradient was uh, one, uh, one ninth or uh, three thirteenths or something like that and you don't recognize what the decimal is. So number four, how to factorize a quadratic, cubic, uh, quartic. Let's say I wanted to factorize this horrific looking cubic. Okay, now um, people kind of forget, oh, actually, I can factorize with the help of my calculator. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve the equation of that cubic equaling zero. I'm going to find the solutions to that. So I'm going to go to menu and then I'm going to go to A, so scroll down to get to A, and then polynomial, and then polynomial degree of 3. So this is what I would use, so I'm typing in 6, 41, 45, and minus 50. This is what I would use to solve the cubic. And I press equals, and the first x value that I get is 2 thirds. Press equals again, and I'm getting minus 5 halves. Press equals again, I'm getting minus 5. So what does this relate to? Well, if x is equal to 2 thirds, then 3x is equal to 2. So 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. So 3x minus 2 would have been one of the brackets. <clears throat> then minus 5 halves. So x is minus 5 halves. So multiplying both sides by 2 and adding 5 to both sides. So 2x plus 5 was one of the brackets. And last but not least, we've got the x minus 5. So that means that x plus 5 is also one of the brackets. Now, the only thing you've got to keep an eye out for um, is if this had an extra factor that could have been divided through. So you want to check that these 3x times 2x times x multiplies out to make the 6x cubed, which it does in this case, so we're all sorted.
So for number five, I'm going to look at the table function. The table function has loads of different uses. Uh, one possible use uh, is that maybe someone thinks that they found a formula that will generate prime numbers, and you need to find an example where it fails. You can use the table function, put in the formula, generate some values, find the one that doesn't work. Okay? Um, another example is to write down the first five terms of this sequence. Okay? So if you go to menu and then go to number nine for table, the f of x we want to type in as the three over x plus one. So you want to use the three over the x button top right hand corner plus one. Uh, you'll come up with a g of x, so you can do two different sequences at the same time, if you like, or two different functions. Uh, and we're going to start at 1, we're going to end at 5, and we're going to go up in 1s. The step is 1. Okay, and so I get u1 is 4, u2 is 2.5, u3 is 2, u4 is 1.75, and scrolling down, u5 is 1.6. Okay, and so I've got the first five terms very easily without having to actually type the values into my calculator. Now, it may also be that you end up wanting to sketch a graph uh, just to see kind of how it behaves, uh, maybe for a uh, range and domain problem, for example, um, and you're not quite sure what the graph looks like. So let's say you've got this y equals x e to the x. Now, what you can do is if you go into the table function, you type in x e to the x as your f of x. I don't need a g of x. And let's say I want to start at minus 2, end at 2, and I can go up in 0.2s. Okay? So what you'll get is the calculator plugging in all of these values for you, so you don't have to do it yourself. So if I'm running down the f of x column, I can see that I'm starting at minus 0.27, and it's getting, it's decreasing, it's decreasing. It gets to minus 1, where it's minus 0.367, and then it starts increasing again. So it's decreasing, then it starts increasing, so it stops. So there must be a stationary point. Um, and then it starts increasing again up to zero, where it goes through zero. And then as it goes past zero, it is now increasing exponentially and increasing much more quickly. And so the curve will look something like that. OK, so it can give you a general idea of what the shape of the curve looks like. And the last thing in my list is the abs button. Now. Uh, the modulus function is otherwise referred to as the absolute value. So uh, that's why it's abbreviated on your calculator ABS. You may not have spotted this before. The ABS button is on the left-hand bracket, the left-hand parenthesis. Okay? Um, so just above, um, well, just to the right of the ENG button. OK, so let's say you want to find y when x is equal to 2. There's lots of minus signs going on. There's the modular sign. It all gets a little bit confusing. So I want to type in this line here with the x as 2. So minus 3, take away. Now the absolute button, so shift and then bracket. And you'll see the modular signs come up. Then minus 5, take away 2, press equals, and we get minus 10. Okay, and so it does all the work for us.